QuickBooks Part 8 Bank Reconciliation Part 2. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and phone number, and you will also find these videos on Facebook. I'm going to jump over to the Excel document that we had up. We're going to go back to the bank reconciliation process. We know already that we're going to hit reconcile when we go to the main page on QuickBooks. But let's think about what a typical bank reconciliation looks like. And maybe we can compare it with how we all reconcile our bank accounts each month. We're going to have a balance per the bank statement. That's our balance per bank. We're going to add deposits and transfer transit. We're going to subtract outstanding checks. There's going to be those differences to get down to the balance per book, which is the balance per the company checkbook. The, ba the bank does not know about deposits that we've posted as deposits and they haven't received yet. That gets added. They don't know about checks that have not posted the bank statement yet. That's why those get subtracted. So let's go over to the main menu, reconcile, and we'll see that what the system wants us says we last reconciled the checking account on 1-31-2011. Our next statement date is 2-28. It lists the beginning balance and now it's going to ask us for the balance on the bank statement. It's going to ask us for the balance on the bank statement. I'm going to put in the same balance here, assuming that everything is clear. That is, everything that's been posted as a deposit or every check that's been written in the book is equivalent to the balance that's been written at, at the bank. So, the balance that I'm going to put in here is the same as what the bank statement should show, and it happens to be 50474.86. In the checkbook for the end for 228-2011. So at 131-2011, we started with the 49995. As of the statement date, my book balance is 50474 I'm going to say that's the same amount as what is on the bank statement. That's why it says up here, select an account to reconcile checking and enter the ending balance from your account statement, which is another word for bank statement. The ending balance for the bank statement will be the same as the book amount. Let's include a service charge like we did of $5 last time and let's hit continue. Remember that the service charge is going to be posted automatically. And we have items over here that are checks and other amounts that have posted and we have deposits over here. Now, I'm going to assume that everything in July, everything in, in February, excuse me, already posted. So, so what I've done here is I have put check marks by all of the February checks and payments and I put check marks by the deposits and credits all for February and we will see that the ending balance I post is 54.7486 is five dollars higher than the cleared balance and that's due to the service charge that's going to be automatically posted by QuickBooks. Let's hit reconcile now. It says there's a five dollar discrepancy between your statement and the transactions you've selected. You're given some choices when you've got a reconciling item discrepancy. Return to reconcile this, this discrepancy so QuickBooks can have an accurate record of your income and expenses. Look for transactions that are on your statement but not on QuickBooks. Leave reconcile to reconcile later. That's a choice. Enter an adjustment to force QuickBooks to match your statement. Let's see what happens when we hit enter an adjustment. And it says, congratulations, your account is now in balance. So what happened was the $5 service charge 
was adjusted and now our cleared balance, the balance per the bank reconciliation equals the ending balance, the balance that we entered as the one that was on the bank statement. So let's hit display and see the reconciliation report. Beginning balance, the sum of all the deductions that we've reconciled, that posted, the sum of all the deposits that posted, here's our balance. We had um, unclear transactions. These are clear transactions in the top part. Unclear transactions down here, which offset to zero. And then we've got new transactions, which are things that are happening after 228. Let's do one more transaction. Let's reconcile March. And I want to reconcile March because March has some checks involved in it. So it's the checking account, last reconciled on 228. And again, we're being asked to enter the statement, which is your bank statement. So I've entered an ending balance there, 49624.86, because I think that all the items on the bank statement match the checkbook. Here's my $5 fee again. I'm going to hit continue. It says it's more than 30 days in the future because today is more than 30 days before March 31st. I'm going to hit when it says, are you sure you want to make the change? I'm going to hit yes. And what this means for me practically is that I can't um, enter any more activity in March or I'm going to mess up my checkbook. So, let's assume that all the March activity posts to the bank from the bank statement and matches the check. You can see what I've done here is I have checked all the items in March, checks and payments. I have checked the deposit in March, March 31st, and you can see that I have a difference of $5. Let's hit reconcile now. There's a $5 discrepancy because that service charge is not posted on my bank account for 331 yet in my checkbook. It's in the bank statement, but it's not in the checkbook. So I'm going to hit enter an adjustment. And you can see that the ending balance now matches the reconciled balance. Let's display the report. Okay. Now there's a difference here. We've got beginning balance, all the items that we deducted negative, the 1155, all the items we added, 305. We have these unclear transactions that offset from that error that we made in January when we posted manually the service charge. And you'll note that there is no activity past 331 down here like there was in the prior reconciliation summary. So we now have a reconciled bank statement through March 31st. Let's jump over to the check register. And you'll notice these check marks. And you'll notice that everything except these two offsetting $5 journal entries, the mistake that I made on the bank service charges, where I manually entered the bank service charge debit to reduce the account, manual entry credit to reverse the impact. Those two items are not checked. All the other items on the, on the checkbook have a check mark next to them. So again, the reason these two are not checked are because are the reason why they appear as uncleared items on the bank statement. That's as far as we're going to get on QuickBooks. A for weekly live chats on critical accounting topics, including QuickBooks, you can go to the continuing classroom page on our website. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos on our website by topic. For live tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net. Here's our website, here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.